Mr. Ryan, thank you for being on CEO of Moments of Truth. Uh, let's start our discussion by just talking about your company and how it got started. What was the impetus for starting Ryan? Well, Mickey, Ryan started in 1991. Mm -hmm. At that time, there were two of us, and we saw an opportunity to go help clients on a success-based fee, where we'd go to them and we'd say, look, I don't know if you've got it right or not, We'll go through, we'll audit it very carefully, and if you didn't recover everything, if you paid more than you should, we'll get it back for you. And if we find that you underpaid, we'll help you remediate it. So when you started here in Dallas and then you started branching out, how? tell me about that expansion process. How did you decide what cities to go into? You just followed your well, clients, you're, you're, essentially? Or? Mickey, you're going to talk about one of my biggest strategic blunders uh -huh. uh, because we stayed here in Texas. Uh -huh. We spent that entire time really focusing on Texas taxes, on franchise taxes, sales taxes, that, that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until 1999 that we uh, opened our first office outside of Texas in Georgia, uh -huh. and we had an epiphany when we went to Atlanta that, wow, you know what? This not only works in Texas, <laughs> but it also works in Atlanta. There are taxes in Atlanta. So I was about eight years late uh, getting to uh, getting out of Texas, and frankly, if I had it to do over again, yeah. we would have started immediately. In 2006, when we jumped into Canada, uh, it was a completely new exercise for us. We bought one of our biggest competitors there, uh, and we started learning the international tax world. And today, we found that that process works all over the globe. So tell me about this moment of truth when you were sitting in an office. Uh, the way I read it, an employee came in that made you realize, okay, we got to think about the way our culture has grown up. Because I believe that running a one office outfit here in Dallas and then now being spread all over the world, is, it's a very different challenge. I started in public accounting. We didn't have the internet. Uh, we didn't have laptops. I remember the first uh, lunchbox computer oh, yeah. that I had. It was cost $7,000 and it was a brick. They call yeah. it a luggable, I think. Th that's right. That's right. <laughs> but before that, if you wanted to go to the tax library, well, you had to be at the tax library. Mm. Uh, if you wanted to be, uh, if you wanted to have access to the client files, well, you had to be in the office. They were all paper. Uh, there was no way to communicate. So mm. the idea of working from home, the notion from being remote or virtual, it simply didn't exist. And it hit me at that moment that, you know what? Things have changed. The tax library is no longer in the tax library. It's on the internet. Yeah. Uh, all of our files are digitized. They're on the networks. Yeah. Uh, we can work and we do work everywhere uh, and anywhere. So it was my view and, and the commitment I made to Christy was, look, I take your point. You're right. We've got to make some big changes. And if you'll stay with me, I'll put you in charge of it. You can help us figure out what the next iteration of Ryan is going to be, not just for you, but for everybody. You know, I got to believe that some of your colleagues have faced a similar situation where they've had some level of turnover, and they, some of them may respond by saying, well, that's just the nature of our work. Uh, they're in a different stage in life. They'll come back when they're in another stage in life. I know that some companies are now starting to look at women after they've had their children and trying to bring them back. So why? Why then? Why, why that person? Well, well, Mickey, that was me. Yeah. The person that you're talking about was me. Okay. It, 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 it dawned on me that I was actually not following the rules that we had set forth. Hmm. I mean, let's face it. I was on an airplane. I'm in front of clients. I'm not showing up at the office at 8.30 every day and That's clocking in. You're doing the work right? where it I'm doing the done. work wherever I happen to be. Yeah. So my view was we have to fix this. Yeah. We, we, we have to figure out a way that everybody in the organization can do their work the way I was doing my work. Yeah. I'm doing it when I need to. And so if I've got a critical client matter, I am laser focused on it. I'm yeah. going to stay with it until it's resolved, no matter what. But you know, if I get a call from home and one of my five daughters is ill, I'm going to be laser focused on yeah. that and I'm going to stay with it until it's resolved. So we wanted to create a, a work environment, a culture that said, look, we're going to measure you based on results. So what keeps somebody from being tempted to say, all right, so if we can achieve these results with these many hours, if they would only work these many hours, we could achieve even more results, right? Isn't there potentially a temptation, not necessarily for you, but maybe some of your partners or maybe some of your colleagues, uh, other CEOs, to have that kind of mentality? Well, Mickey, if you set forth an example, if, in other words, if you agree upon a result and somebody achieves that, why do you really care what they do with the rest of their time? Yeah. Uh, now, my hope is that they might be more excited and more yeah. engaged and do another case. Yeah. But if they've already met all their metrics and they want to go take a vacation or spend time with their family or go to the soccer game with their kids, who am I to judge that? Uh, I tell my partners that I am really the environmental manager. <laughs> I'm the person whose job it is to make sure that everybody is as happy and successful as we can make them across the organization. And we do that in a number of ways. 
One, as I mentioned, we constantly survey our people. And we don't just survey them, but we act on the things that we learn that they tell us about opportunities mm -hmm. for improvement, areas that we can do better, things that we can, <clears throat> that we can save money in doing. We all share the same desire to be successful, you know, to have work-life success, and we, we build on that. If you're able to teach somebody to be successful and help them and provide them with the tools necessary to be uh, as happy and successful as they can be, they're going to be your best workers. I've spent my entire career, uh, you know, in the financial and tax industry. Now gets more invitations to speak on workplace flexibility than I do on tax matters. I think it's, I think that's a testament to how important these things are, you know, in in our economy, in our world today. Well, Mr. Ryan, thank you for being on CEO Moments of Truth. Appreciate Real pleasure. It.